Government anticipates positive outcome from transition in MNIB to public-private partnership. We'll have details to this story and more in the National Report. The Caracol Carnival Committee presents Majestic Thursday. Majestic Thursday on February 16th at the Hillsborough Recreation Ground, 8 p.m. sharp. Come out in your numbers as six beauties will vie for the coveted crown. Marsha Blair, Miss Baltazar Grenada, Kiana Thomas, Miss Bogle, Kenesha Kojo, Miss BBH, Rihanna Primus, Miss Six Rose, Michaela Gregg, Miss Pity Martini, and Renaya Alexander, Miss Lester. Admission $40. Showtime 8 p.m. Remember, it's Majestic Majestic Thursday, February 16th, 8 p.m. at the Hillsboro Recreation Ground. With the details to the news for Tuesday, February 14th, I am Rikisha St. Louis. Prime Minister Honorable Deacon Mitchell anticipates positive economic benefits from the creation of a new entity to replace the MNIB that will allow the government to be a shareholder along with private individuals, organizations and farming cooperatives. During a news conference on Tuesday, Prime Minister Mitchell announced that the new entity will adopt a public-private partnership approach to give government, farmers and members of the public a fair chance at decision-making pertaining to the operations and successes of the company. He explained that under the current MNIB Act, there is no allowance for public-private partnership. Therefore, after the six-month transition period, the existing act will be repealed so government can move forward with its new legal structure. What we are looking at here is, is potentially the creation of an actual company that allows for the government to be a shareholder with other private uh, entities. What that does is automatically change the structure and the management structure of the entity. Right. Second, what we are looking for is to get private capital to actually invest in that entity. We can't get private capital to invest in MNIB because it's a statutory body. We can't issue, as a statutory body, we can't issue shares or anything of that sort. Legally, we need to make sure that, to some extent, we future-proof the political involvement that leads to a situation where almost the entire board and the management, for instance, you know, um, are driven by factors not related to the sustainability or the survivability of the, the entity. We can't have a situation where people are just being hired uh, and, and management is being made top-heavy um, because the taxpayers will pay for it and they're not doing anything. So, so really it's to ensure that the legal uh, board management is actually changed to make sure that we have a counter prevailing force, so to speak, to keep the entity efficient. Prime Minister Mitchell said the call for private capital investment is not limited only to Grenadians and local companies. We certainly would want to encourage and give first preference to Grenadians um, and our banks have quite a lot of liquidity which suggests that there are lots of Grenadians with savings in, in banks. Uh, there are farmers' cooperatives which exist uh, from Caracou to Grenada. Uh, we certainly would want to encourage them to exist. And there are other uh, businesses in Grenada which are currently in the food and logistics business. And uh, we certainly would want to encourage them to exist as well. Even uh, businesses in the hotel and tourism sector. Um, we would also want to encourage them to, to exist because ultimately we want our hotels in particular to be able to buy in produce that is grown in Grenada and to be able to use uh, agro-process producing in Grenada. So we would want to focus on Grenada, but we are not limited to Grenada only. Agriculture Minister Senator the Honorable Adrian Thomas welcomes the move that gives farmers and farming organizations the opportunity to have a voice within the new entity. The farmers, most of them are basically private enterprises, private entity. And it is time for, for these private entities to really come up and be part of the marketing process. Uh, it has not been like that in the past. The private entities were selling to marketing board, which was a public corporation, statutory body. And um, the farmers basically didn't have a say in the, in the, in the end product. Um, in this new entity, the farmers will have a critical say in terms of going forward. And the Prime Minister did outline that they, will, they too will have the opportunity in terms of being part and parcel of the, of the new enterprise that we, are th that we are thinking of. With plans to dissolve the operations of the MNIB over the next six months, Prime Minister Honorable Deacon Mitchell also announced that government will undertake the responsibility to pay severance packages to the 94 workers whose services will be terminated and assume liability for the over $15 million debt of the entity. 
The first cohort of directors of several statutory bodies in Grenada are undergoing two days of training at the Koyaba Beach Resort as part of the director's education and accreditation program. This initiative fulfills the government's commitment to ensure that all directors are duly trained, certified and accredited to effectively carry out duties as director within a year of appointment. The opening ceremony on Tuesday was addressed by Prime Minister Honorable Deacon Mitchell. A properly governed and well-run entity requires, in the first instance, a balanced and fit-for-purpose board of directors. Such directors must understand their mandate, their roles and functions, and be equipped to execute these functions with skill and care. Let me say from the outset, that equipping includes giving the boards the independence they need, free from undue and excessive political interference and meddling. Prime Minister Mitchell says the training is another part of government's transformational agenda to ensure prudence and transparency in all they execute. Trevor Blake, Managing Director of the Eastern Caribbean Securities Exchange, underscored the importance of a training exclusively for public sector institutions. This is the first time that the government has mandated that directors of its various boards must, be, must undertake governance training and consequently arrange to have the program held exclusively for its institutions. This is exemplary. Good governance is just as important in state-owned entities as it is in the private sector. In the region, the public sector is big and contributes significantly to economic development. And this is not peculiar to small developing countries like ours. Globally, state-owned enterprises account for some 20% of the largest 2,000 companies in the world. And the IMF in 2020 estimated that state-owned enterprises accounted for some US $45 trillion, which is almost half of the global GDP. So state-owned enterprises are big, important, and growing. He says these sessions are important for small developing states like Grenada to help mitigate against the many ills that plagues institutions. Given their, their, um, their size and their weight, it is important that these, um, uh, the, the, these entities adhere to proper governance standards to ensure that they operate efficiently to mitigate risk and guard against mis mismanagement and, and corruption. Past the president of the Chartered Governance Institute Canada, Janice Riven, says while this is her first session with directors of statutory bodies, the fundamentals remain the same, and at the end, participants will be better equipped to serve at various boards. I have worked with SOEs in the past with boards of directors, um, but Mr. Blake did say that um, something that surprised me, he said that um, government, the SOEs, um, are just as important in terms of governance um, as publicly um, listed companies or private companies. I'd like to challenge that and say it's more important because government is the, creates the culture which in, within which all organizations um, have to adapt and, um, and accept. So um, you are the ones that are creating the culture within which uh, private enterprises, uh, not-for-profits, are expected to grow and take as an example. Um, and that's why I'm just so thrilled to be here today. The Advanced Director Training course facilitated by the ECSC and the CGIC focuses on the strategic areas of governance for directors finance for directors, strategy and risk management. This is the National Report. The news will continue after the break. My name is Jefferson Antoine and the name of my business is Debs Honey. Well, I've been in this line of work for three years now. What gets me inspired is because I'm a, I do agriculture, so I'm looking for pollination and bees one of the best pollinators you have. Some of the challenges I face is with material, frames, board, lumber. Well, there are no place really selling machines and things, so you have to look online and so forth. Well, the grant actually helping me to boost, boost my business because I will have more boxes. I get a machine, 
again, um, as coming up, you know, most of the money you make in, in the honey, you have to spend it back in material. So, you know, you get a nice brick from that. In five years, I see this business much bigger than now. Yes, Is that yes for sis? Yes. Welcome back. Government is pleased with the progress made on the Labory Main Road project in the St. George Southeast constituency. Parliamentary Representative Honorable Philip Tellisford and Minister for Mobilization, Implementation and Transformation Honorable Andy Williams recently visited the project site with contractor of Hanover Construction Company Limited, Richard Maharaj. Ministers Tellisford and Williams are both impressed with the scope of work that was done since their last visit in January and look forward to the project's completion in April. The work is part of the $48.6 million feeder road project and includes the construction of drains, culverts and retaining walls. It is important to us to see that the road is done in a timely manner and also that the quality of the road is on par with what we expect. And thus far, I can say that, that I am very impressed with what I see. And, and in speaking with the contractor, they, comfort, they comforted me that the road will be done by about April, which is timely enough for the residents of the area who have been suffering so long. My last visit here was last week. Mm -hmm. And there has been significant improvement from last week to now. They've done at least two additional payments. So we've seen some, some good improvements and of course that makes me happy because the faster we get this work done, it's better for us. So we've seen some, some good improvements in that area and um, I'm very satisfied, the residents are satisfied. They have been calling, they have been expressing their desire to see the work complete and now that we are addressing it, they are now satisfied and so that, that makes me happy. Director of Hanover Construction Company, Richard Maharaj, says the project should be completed by April. He spoke of the company's contribution to economic growth. That has been one of our focus um, as a company to ensure that we are um, empowering people by employment and also providing um, um, economic support to the economy by purchasing um, our materials, the majority of our materials are purchased locally other than items that are not available in Grenada. And um, we have seen this as a, a tremendous benefit um, to our company and also the feedback from local employment um, um, is most appreciated. Finally in the news, the Climate Smart Agriculture and Rural Enterprise Program SIAP raises awareness on the effects of climate change and mitigation measures and fish quality. SIAP representatives recently held a session with fishers at the Guav Fish Market and outlined the proper procedures of fish handling, the importance of quality and freshness, the four rules of fishing, the prevention of fish spoilage and contamination, and how to identify a good or bad fish. This is part of measures to improve the quality and market of fish locally, regionally, and internationally. Fisheries assistant attached to SIAP Khalil Paul facilitated the session. What I think it's most important for the fishers to go home with or carry along their operations is maintaining quality fish. Um, fish is food and you want to ensure that whatever you bring to your consumers, what you bring to the nation is of the highest quality. So all the proper measures that were discussed in terms of the gutting, the cleaning, the icing, all of these I think they are most vital and that is something that they should continue or do in their operations. Climate Smart Agriculture Coordinator at SIAP Kenley Edwards highlights the importance of maintaining good fish quality. As we know with a good fish quality, you basically will be able to one, maintain your fish, but not only that, but also get premium price. You know, and um, we looked at not just the local market, but also export, because fish is a very lucrative sector. And um, it may seem as if it's not being paid much attention. Fisherman Sean Walker says it is useful to be reminded of the proper measures in handling fish. This just keep me to remind you that I have to take care of my fish when I hold it and make sure that I bring good fish for the people in the nation to eat and to ship out. This is things that I always do as a fisherman, make sure I keep my boat clean, make sure I take care of my fish. You know, every little thing that I make sure put in place for the fishing. 
That story just ended the national report for Tuesday, February 14th, recapping the top story. Government anticipates positive outcome from transitioning MNIB to public-private partnership. On behalf of the entire news and production team, I am Rakesha St. Louis saying thank you for joining us.